So welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. In this video, I just want to do a chit chat regarding these particular mini PCs. They are very high powered devices and have a very nice high quality. I did full reviews, but I just wanted to do a chit chat with you guys about how is the overall emulation performance, because this is absolutely a beautiful quality product. And that is something I just want to basically also discuss in this. And what are the difference between the two of them? Of course, the most obvious thing is that we do have different kind of, let's say, measurements. And also when it comes to the overall performance, maybe. So then we're having two different models over here, the six and number seven. Just let's say it like that, just to keep it easy. This is just the GTR seven. It's absolutely a beast. It's a slightly bigger than the other model, but it also comes with a lot of nice power in the inside. And with emulation, oh boy, it's going to be absolutely in gaming paradise. But for emulation power, these are absolutely beasts. And it's just a difference between when it comes to specs, but also the measurement and everything else. The question remains, which one will the best one for just this year? And with the form factor, we're also going to get ourselves different kind of, let's say, overall less specifications. Not only the measurements and the power of the boxes, but also when it comes to the controls and the ports itself. But one of the biggest examples is what we're having with the GTR, a completely different configuration with different kind of, let's say, connectivities. So for example, we're having more USB ports, we have a display port, an HDMI port, but also we have two RG45s. But also with the smaller version, we're having an RG45, only two USB 2.0, and we're having a display port, an HDMI port. But it's kind of interesting that when you're looking at it, the, all the other parts are exactly the same, especially when you're looking at, let's say, the Type-C connections. Okay, so I want to focus on Bata Sera. And the reason why, because there are some kits out there that you can get. I mean, you can buy this very nice case where you can maybe store your mini PC, but inside the case, it's completely like a kit. So this contains a hard drive, also called the PAL keypad. This isn't one of those different kind of versions you can basically buy, but also includes the controllers. Oh, I must say that I have been, let's say, bitching on these controllers forever because they are okay quality, but absolutely not the overall quality of an original PlayStation 2 controller. So take that into consideration. This is an okay quality, but I have seen way better ones out there. But this is more one of those kits you can just slap on a mini PC, configure it, and you're ready to go. But take consideration where these things claim they're like a plug and play solution, you always need to do tinkering with them. Do all, let's say, the power of the mini PCs. And not to forget also, some of the things are completely like not configured at all. So you need to have some knowledge about Batashira. But first, let's take a close look at this tiny box. Let's do a quick overview and what are we actually getting. Old, old school games. Yeah, Outrun 2006 is one of those great examples. But take consideration, these games are absolutely like not very demanding for the machine like this. Race for the top position. Anymore. When it comes to indie games or just basic racing games, mini motor racing can be played on many different old school hardware. But I can tell you when you have certain games, you're going to basically like pump them up when it comes to shadow effects and all kinds of shenanigans you can put in the game. Some of them are pretty damn, let's say, demanding. But this B-Link, also same thing with the previous games, no problem whatsoever. When it comes to God of War, it's absolutely one of those games. I was flabbergasted to see that it actually runs on the original graphics settings. But take consideration, if you want to enjoy God of War fully, you just need to get yourself a dedicated GPU. Because this game is very difficult to play. But again, surprisingly, it runs pretty good. Let's try some Crash. I love this game, by the way, the old school trilogy. But with previous game systems, we needed to put everything on low. But with this particular game box, I was surprised to see that we can put every single setting on high and full HD resolution. But there is a catch. When you're looking closely to the FPS meter, you will see that it runs around 55 FPS. 
and it can even dip all the way to the 50. But actually when you're just playing the game, I don't really actually notice it. For the first test bench, let's take a close look at some God of War. For the PlayStation Portable with the PPSS PP emulator. Everything going to be setting to the highest and maximum level, especially when it comes to the internal skater. Let's get ourselves a safe state load and let's try. If you're going to deep dive into the PlayStation 2 emulator, yeah, with a device like this, we can actually run it on higher resolution without any problem. And we do have an absolutely overall cool PlayStation 2 performance. And of course, PlayStation 3 emulation. And I can tell you if you're going to deep dive into this, first of all, the loading times are so fast when it comes to actually loading the game itself. Take him down! Play Xbox Classic without any problem. When it comes to Xbox 360, it's going to be absolutely being a mixed performance where Forza 2 doesn't even run at all. So a little bit of a bummer, but we're not there yet when it comes to, in my opinion, Xbox 360 emulation and mini PCs. Where we do get amazing performance, I love myself GameCube and F-Zero GX. Of course, it's also a great game to benchmark, but this game runs perfectly without any problems when it comes to 4K internal resolution. Absolutely not, this game looks amazing and it's very exciting to see that we're actually having a tiny mini PC that can play these games without any hassle. We have so many different devices that can actually play some Sega Dreamcast. But when it comes to this mini PC, we can put everything on the highest setting. Eternal resolution can even upscale to 4K, it's absolutely nuts and that is what we're going to find with a PC like this. Depending on what kind of platform you want to play, but if you want to get into Sega Dreamcast, I think a combination with the Red Dream emulator, it's going to be absolutely a lot of fun. The GTR is just absolutely a beautiful device, it's slightly bigger, of course a different price tag, but let's just chat about this particular product. The processor we're getting is the 7840HS. Comes with the graphics AMD Radeon 780M. Operating system will be Windows 11. Storage capacity 1TB. For gaming is not a lot. Then we're having 32GB dual channel memory. Communication Wi-Fi 6. And we have even the option to add ourselves a dual M2 PC Express 4.0. So that's pretty damn awesome. First game I wanted to check out is Cyberpunk, a very demanding game. Now I've noticed it has been optimized quite well. And on a mini PC, it's even a freaking miracle that we can get it running for 60 FPS. I did need to lower every single graphics to low. So that is something you need to take consideration, but it still looks pretty damn great on this. Dirt 5 was absolutely a cool game to try out on this. I needed to force it all the way to 1080p. Just wanted to see what happens if you're going to use 1080p and just check out if you're going to force it to low medium settings. I've been tweaking quite a long time with it, but I've noticed you need to put everything on low to get the best results. Noticing is that we can have like a very cool stable frame rate. I did manage to get a little bit of an, let's say 50-ish if I'm in like medium graphics. So you need to play around with it, but it's actually pretty damn cool. It still looks amazing. And I find it very fascinating to see that the game runs pretty damn nice on this b GTR. Where we can actually play AAA games on a mini PC is just amazing. Of course, we have some limitations. For me, I'm just going to mainly play indie games on a B-Link GTR. But also those games can be quite, let's say surprisingly difficult to run. Of course, the game you're seeing here, Hunt Down, is not a very demanding game and can be played on old mini PCs. But mainly when you're looking at most of these games, think about the new generation. Hades is one of those that are surprisingly quite difficult to play on a cheap device. And there we do need a little bit of more power than with your typical indie game quickly i just want to discuss the emulation part with a device like this we don't have any let's say big limitations we had with cheaper devices loading times with castlevania on places 3 were very significant faster than my cheap mini pcs reviewed 
so there was such a big improvement when it comes to the overall performance when it comes to emulation here in quick overview of a couple of games think about playstation 2 playstation portable but also playstation 3 